after learning how to evaluate indefinite integrals using basic integration methods and techniques of integration, we are now ready for module two. And module two focuses on definite integrals. And in this lesson, you must be able to apply properly the properties in evaluating definite integrals. If f of x is a given continuous function and capital F of x is the integral of the given function f of x, x equals a and x equals b are the given values of x, then the definite integral from a to b is denoted by the integral of f of x dx from the lower limit a to the upper limit b. A and B are what we call as the limits of integration. And to obtain the definite integral of a function, okay, the integral of f of x dx from the lower limit A to the upper limit B, we evaluate first its indefinite integral capital F of x. And the definite integral is the value of the indefinite integral at the upper limit b minus the value of the indefinite integral at the lower limit a. And geometrically, the definite integral of f of x dx from a to b can be interpreted as the area under the curve of y is equal to f of x from x equals a to x equals b. Now, Evaluating definite integrals is governed by some general properties of definite integrals. And the first property is if f of x is integrable on the closed interval from A to B, then interchanging the limits of inter integration changes the sign of the integral. That is the integral of f of x dx from A to B is equal to the negative integral of f of x dx from b to a. Second, if f is integrable on a closed interval containing three points a, b, and c, then the integral of f of x dx from the lower limit a to the upper limit b is equal to the sum of the integrals of f of x dx from the lower limit a to the upper limit c plus the integral of f of x dx from the lower limit c to the upper limit b. And third, the definite integral of a given integrand is independent of the variable of integration. That is, the integral of f of x dx from a to b is equivalent to the integral of f of z dz from a to b. And to illustrate how to evaluate definite integrals, let us consider evaluating the integral of x to the fourth dx from the lower limit one to the upper limit two. First, we evaluate the indefinite integral of x to the fourth dx, which is x raised to five over five. Now, we can factor out 1 over 5 since it is a constant. And then we evaluate x raised to 5 at the upper limit 2 minus x raised to 5 at the lower limit 1. So that is 1 over 5 times the quantity 2 raised to 5 minus 1 raised to 5, which gives us 31 over 5. Next. Let us consider evaluating the integral of 3x squared minus 2dx from the lower limit 2 to the upper limit 4. Okay, the integral or the indefinite integral is x cubed minus 2x. Then we evaluate the indefinite integral x cubed minus 2x at the upper limit 4 minus the value of x cubed minus 2x at the lower limit 2 simply saying that we are going to replace x by 4 minus the value when we replace x by 2. Hence, the definite integral is 52. 
Now, even weighting definite integrals is also governed by two important theorems when the integrands are even function or add function. But we, before we go over the two theorems, let us recall first what an even function is or an add function is. And we say that a function f is said to be an even function of x if f evaluated at negative x is equal to f of x for all x belonging to the domain of f. And graphically, an even function is symmetric about the y-axis. On the other hand, a function f is said to be an add function of x if f of negative x is negative f of x for all x belonging to the domain of f and the graph of an add function is symmetric about the origin. Okay, the first theorem simply states that if f of x is an even function of x, then the integral of f of x dx from the lower limit negative a to the upper limit a is twice the integral of f of x dx from zero to a. That is, the integral is equal to the sum of the integral of f of x dx from negative a to zero plus the integral of f of x dx from zero to a. And geometrically, this is actually the area of region one plus the area of region two. And since there is symmetry with respect to the y-axis, the area of region one is equal to the area of region two. Therefore, we can simply evaluate or find the area from zero to two, and then just multiply it by two. Now for add function, if f of x is an add function of x, then the integral of f of x dx from negative a to a is equal to zero. Now geometrically, the representation of an add function which is symmetric with respect to the origin uh, will have two regions, region one and region two. And the area of region one and region two are numerically equal but opposite in sign. So area of region one minus area of region two will give us zero. Hence, the integral of f of x dx from minus a to a is equal to zero if the integrand is an add function. And to illustrate, evaluating the integral of x cubed dx divided by one plus x squared from the lower limit negative two to the upper limit two will give us zero since the integrand x cubed over 1 plus x squared is an add function. Now, if we have the integral of x squared plus 1 dx from minus 1 to 1, since the integrand x squared plus 1 is an even function of x, then this is equal to 2 times the integral of x squared plus 1 dx from 0 to 1. So that will give us twice the value of the indefinite integral x cubed over 3 plus x to be evaluated from the lower limit 0 to the upper limit 1, which is equal to 2 times the value of the indefinite integral at the upper limit one minus the value of the indefinite integral at the lower limit zero. Therefore, the definite integral is equal to a over three. To summarize, we say that the definite integral is the value of the indefinite integral at the upper limit b minus its value at the lower limit a. That is, the integral of f of x dx from a to b is equal to f at b minus f at a. And if f of x is an even function of x, 
then the integral of f of x dx from minus a to a is twice the integral of f of x dx from 0 to a. And lastly, if f of x is an odd function of x, then the integral of f of x dx from the lower limit a to the upper limit a is lower limit negative a rather to the upper limit a is equal to zero. <laughs>